After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going to go ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. May God. Thanks be to God. This morning I'm not going to ask for a volunteer. What we do here we've been doing since the beginning of the year is asking someone to pray for the preacher. It's an old Baptist tradition. And so many volunteers, and usually it's Kaylee, who's 10, who looks at the congregation song and says, come on, people, let's get up here and pray. But lots of people volunteer, but this morning our lay leader Rob Hill's going to offer the prayer for the preacher. So let us pray together. Lord, uh, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity to come together on this Sunday to worship especially on Easter Sunday, when we're reminded of all the sacrifices that have been made for each and every one of us. And this morning we ask for special prayers for Pastor Terry, uh, especially as she deals with health issues with her mother and also health issues of her own. Uh, Most importantly, let her know that she's not only appreciated, but loved by this congregation. We pray that in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rob. Now let me tell you something this morning. We're going to pretend that we're like the 930 service. When I ask a question, it's not going to be rhetorical. It means you don't get to sit there and go, hmm, it means you get to answer out loud, okay? What's the last thing you all celebrated for this morning? What's the last thing anybody celebrated? Anybody have a birthday this week? A wedding. A wedding? You went to a wedding? Yesterday. Okay. What was that celebration like? Was it big and bold and beautiful? Fun and good food. How many of you have fun when you celebrate? How you have good food when you celebrate? Okay, that's pretty good. What else do you celebrate? What other things get celebrated? Hmm? Nobody here celebrates anything. That's sad. <laughs> Jeremiah, what do you celebrate? Um, birthdays, obviously. Birthdays, obviously. Mm-hmm. Events and stuff. Stuff? Okay. How do you celebrate a birthday? What do you do? Okay, you're supposed to get a gift for somebody, you said, right? Set it up? Not always? Okay. Set stuff up so they have a lot of fun at their birthday party. Sounds like good, and they get gifts. I like that. Pretty good. What else do you celebrate? Anybody else celebrate anything here? I've got to get you all some celebrations. You're all so sad up here. Who's got a hand of, okay, what do you celebrate back there? Your children took you to sight and sound to see Moses. That's pretty good. The rest of us are looking real bad right here now, aren't we? <laughs> what else, Jeremiah? Cool. They celebrate after they have a concert at school by getting to do a special class that they like to do. That's pretty good. What else do you celebrate? Yes.
Amen. Amen. You get a present every morning that you wake up. Jeremiah, you got another one, boy. He's going to preach this morning. Jesus' birthday, we celebrate that, don't we? Christmas. Is there another hand over here? Yes. Celebrate when a young person comes home from college, usually with a degree, right? Not if they just come home in shame or something. No, I'm kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. What else, Mr. Paul, do you celebrate? Okay, celebrate when your big kid gets the Eagle Scout and your little kid gets the bridge from Cub Scout to Scout. Yes, you got another celebration. Jeremiah, next time you want a party, this is your party planner up here. <laughs> Mr. Event Planner, yes. Thanksgiving. Very good. What else? New Year's Eve. What do you all do on New Year's Eve, said the preacher. <laughs> yes, what do you do, Jeremiah? You drink... Fake wine. Fake wine. We're going to drink some fake wine this morning, aren't we? So we've got a real celebration plan this morning. Well, I, I was an English major, so I always have to look up words. You know that, right? To celebrate is to acknowledge a significant or happy day or event with a social gathering and an enjoyable activity. We're having an enjoyable activity right now. I think so. I'm enjoying this. Jeremiah's giving me thumbs up. Allison's giving me thumbs up. Anybody else having an enjoyable activity this morning? Clark's got his hand up. You got to celebrate something, Clark? What do you want to celebrate? When you're on the principal's list. The good principal's list, right? <laughs> Not the principal's, what do we call it? Fecal roster? <laughs> All right. Um, so to celebrate with a social gathering or enjoyable activity, if it's a special day event or holiday, is more solemn or introspective, a verb like observe is often used. We observed Jesus' crucifixion on Friday evening at the last, we did the Last Supper on Thursday, and his crucifixion on Good Friday. That you observe, but today we're celebrating. It's honor and occasion, okay? And we refrain from ordinary business. What does that mean, we refrain from ordinary business on a special celebration day? It means we're not going to run into the store on the way home today, right? We're going to do, how many of you got the day off today? I didn't, but how many of you got the day off today? Some of you did. Some of you are going to get tomorrow off from school, right? I'm getting tomorrow off too, yes. Jeremiah and I are doing the thumbs up to each other here. To mark a date by festivities or other deviation from the routine. Now here we've got some words. I looked up some synonyms. To bless, to exalt, to extol, to glorify, laud, magnify. And this one I had to look up to emblazon. Emblazoned? How many of you emblazoned this day? Yeah, how many of you know what emblazon means? You ready, Mr. Will? Mr. Will Gentle is playing the trumpet for us today. He's going to show you what emblazon means. To inscribe or adorn as of heraldic bearings or devices. Can we hear your heraldic device back there? That's a heraldic device, people. That's emblazoning this day. I already talked about extolling God in the Psalms this morning. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. They shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. We are here to celebrate the resurrection of God from the dead today. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, who came, who was born at Christmas time, right? How many of you like Christmas, like celebrating Christmas? How many of you think Christmas is bigger than Easter? That's because you get a lot of presents, right? <laughs> Hate to break it to you, Easter's bigger than Christmas. You know why? Because, no it is, it really is, because a lot of babies were born, but only one was raised from the dead. Ah, he says, ah, Jeremiah's like, ah, ah, we got it now, right? This is why we are Christians, this is why we're here today. I told the story of Thomas, who was five years old when his brothers went through confirmation. His brothers were 13 and 12, and they went through confirmation. And Thomas's mother was the mother of du jour, who sat with the class that day. And I asked them, I said, what makes a Christian a Christian? And they went, hmm, hmm, hmm. Thomas says, I know Pastor Tawi. I was so brokenhearted when he learned to say ours. But it was Pastor Tawi. I know. I know Pastor Tawi. I said, shh, let the big guys wrestle with it. And the big guys sat there going, um, okay, if you believe in God, you're a Christian. I said, 
amen. Good, good answer. I said that means Jews are Christians, Muslims are Christians, Buddhists are Christians. Everybody's a Christian because a lot of people believe in a God. And they said, no, that's not it. And Thomas was saying, Pastor Tawi, I know to answer. Let me say to answer, Pastor Tawi. I said, shh, shh, shh. This went on for about 15 minutes. And finally, Thomas said, please let me tell them the answer, Pastor Tawi. And I said, all right, Thomas, what's the answer? He said, Jesus was dead and now he's alive again. I said, let's ordain him right now. We don't have to confirm it. We can ordain him because he knew the answer at five years old. Because Jesus was dead and he was alive again. If that's not reason to celebrate, I don't know anything that is worth celebrating in the world. Do you all? Because Jesus was raised from the dead, that means we don't have to be afraid anymore. We don't have to be afraid of anything. doesn't mean that all our days are going to be good and easy and wonderful because I can tell you the truth, that's not what happens, but it means you get through them because God walks you through. Easter is the time that's like that shepherd's staff that the shepherd takes through the valley and keeps you safe with. That's what Easter is for us. It's a cause to celebrate. I love what Paul says in the letter that Toby read this morning. He knows what it is to be hungry. He knows what it is to be full. He knows what it is to celebrate Christ because he says, what? Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to anyone. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's peace. That's power. And what does it end with? I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Let's say that one together. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Amen to that. Amen. Thank you for that. So what are we going to do today? We're going to be like the women at the tomb, aren't we? We're going to go out. You might be a little bit afraid because the world's a scary place. A lot of bad things have happened in the last week. What's happened in the last week in the news, guys? Do you all know? Little people, do you know what's happened in the news? It's another school shooting. Mm -hmm. There were tornadoes that really hurt a lot of people. Things like that can scare us, can't they? So it's all right to be a little bit afraid in the world, but... If you're a little bit afraid, what do you have to think of then? You have to think about Jesus Christ who gave himself for your sake, the sake of the world. And that will give you cause again to celebrate. So what do we say you need for a party? You need a good event. Easter's as good an event as there ever was, right? We're going to eat and drink in just a few moments up here. We're going to share in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the sacrament of God's love for us. A little chocolate on the way out, that's good too. But this is the meal that feeds our souls and makes us strong inside. We're going to sing and we're going to make some noise, right? And it's going to break some people's hearts. We're even going to have some drums playing up here in a few minutes. Oh yeah, we're going to make some noise because that's what you do at a party, right? How many of you on New Year's Eve said, Happy New Year? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Boy, let me hear your Happy New Year. Happy New Year! But I'm going to say, say hallelujah and you're going to say hallelujah. Hallelujah, like a very polite. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me hear a real hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is risen. He is risen. I can do all things. I can do all things. Through Christ. Through Christ. Who strengthens me. Who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You bet you can. Trust me, you can. Toby wrote us a poem last night. She asked me if I read it last night. I said, when did you send it to me? She said, 9 o'clock. I'd been asleep for an hour at that point. Because I got up at 3.30 this morning. It's called Easter Morn, I Am Free. Beneath your gracious, glorious light, we come to celebrate your might. He has risen for our sake, gone before the day could break. Beckoning us to follow still, we lift our cup to you to fill. We reach our palms toward the bread, a thornless radiance upon your head. Together move to celebrate how love has triumphed over hate. We chatter loud for all to hear until we feel your presence near. Spirit quiets, I lose the throng. My heart hears soft your voice's song. I am lost in sudden reverie. I embrace the gift that I am free. Amen, amen, amen. Thanks be to God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.